And welcome back. And our focus for the first segment is talking to representatives of the Belize Tourism Industry Association. Taking over the helm at the organization is uh, President Osmani Salas. We're joined by Valerie Woods, Vice President of the BTIA, and the very, very new Executive Director of uh, the BTIA, John Burgess. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now, Osmani, let's get started, uh, and I was asking you earlier in terms of how settled you feel in this brand new position. You've been very active with the BTIE and the Orange Walk chapter, but taking over the organization or heading the organization on a national level is, is different. Yeah, yeah it's, yes it is, and good morning, Marlene. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as you rightly said, I, I started off involved with the, with the Orange Walk chapter of BTIE, mm -hmm. about three or four years there. and. Um, I was I was given the opportunity to serve at a national level, and it's it's been interesting. It's been it's been very fulfilling up to now. Um, mm -hmm. I, I see it as a team effort, so mm -hmm. I I don't feel overwhelmed. Um, I'm happy that we have an executive director on board, and we'll find out a little more about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have ten destination chapters. We we can go into that a little bit too. But I I see I see the job that we have. You know, working very closely with them as mm -hmm. we as we try to carry out our mission to promote responsible tourism development and serve the interests of our members. So, I, I don't see it as just me doing this alone because we could never do that. But mm -hmm. as a team, I I, I think um, I'm actually looking forward to it. And that's one of the things you've said publicly before that you really are happy with the strength of the team, the executive that you have at this point in time. Let's talk about the other members. We do have Valerie here, uh, but the others, and uh, what strengths you think they'll bring to the organization? Well, uh, at the secretariat, it's, it's, a, it's a small secretariat. Mm -hmm. We have an executive director now, we have a membership officer, and an account slash membership support officer. Small, but I think. Um, um, a, a small group of very committed people, mm -hmm. and um, and I'm pretty sure I'm highly confident that we we can accomplish a lot with our team. Mm -hmm. At the board level, we have our executive committee, um, uh, six of us, um, and the larger board. Each destination chapter sends a, a representative on the national board, so it is at that level yeah. that that we make our, our our policy decisions, we set our direction, and our our secretariat you know helps us to carry that through. Mm -hmm. um, each destination chapter has their own board mm -hmm. with, with, with their own committee that, that helps to run the chapter and a few of them have their own staff members too. Mm -hmm. So um, w when you look at the BTI family, we, we really spread out uh, all over the country. Yeah. And, and some of the established ones like Placencia and up and coming ones like Orange Walk have their own offices and their own staff members. So at the Secretariat, I said three, but if we include the other chapter staff members, we, we, are, we are bigger than that. And, and it's all volunteer, yeah. Marlene. So it's um, it really is the national umbrella organization for the tourism private sector, <coughs> um, lobbying, advocating mm -hmm. for the um, for the needs of that within the broader scope of the country's development plans for tourism. But it is literally all volunteer work. The only employed personnel are Mr. John Burgess, now as our new executive director, Talia Tillett, membership officer, who. Um, is well known mm -hmm. by many of the, the chapters <coughs> now, which is good for us to help um, to bring in that institutional capacity and history there. And then Miss Emerita Tun, who has perhaps not the so enviable task of <laughs> uh, crunching the numbers and keeping the books in order and uh, giving a little reminder to members yeah. ever and on again. This year is, is a very important year. Mm -hmm. It marks our 30th anniversary. Oh. and. Um, we, we will, I, I mean, I could, I could say from now that with the help of John, Taliana and Marita, uh, we will prepare uh, a, very, some, a very exciting celebration. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we are at the point of, um, of starting to organize the planning for that. Mm -hmm. So you will, in, in the upcoming weeks and mm -hmm. next few months, um, you, you will start to hear about the, the plans that we are setting out for that, involving all the chapters. Mm -hmm. So it's a big deal for us, and we, we will use it as an opportunity to highlight the work that we do and, and, and well, important tasks that we have as a private sector association. Now, let's move to uh, John, who is <laughs> the newest member of this team. John, let's find out a little bit of your background and why you feel uh, up to the challenge of becoming the ED of BTIA. 
Well, based <coughs> on the on the involvement and participation and the different works being done by the by the BTIA over the years, mm -hmm. um, one of the key things that struck me at the beginning was that there's a lot of volunteer work and a lot of time being committed by board members and other associates, which to me it, it provides a good sense of comfort in knowing that the people that you're going to be working with are very passionate mm -hmm. about what they want to see for the for the members within the tourism industry. Yeah. You know, um, like I mentioned to them, we, we work in, in hand in hand with so many different organizations, entities, um, branches of the government. And at the end, the main thing that we are promoting is one product, we're promoting Belize. Mm -hmm. So there's no, like I mentioned to them, there's no way that we cannot build more on those collaborative efforts and see how we can help our members and Belize as a whole in the tourism industry. Um, with regards to my background, I spent, I've been a little bit here and there, been in the private sector, been in the um, public sector as well. Um, and one of the thing, reasons why I believe um, that I can bring something to, to what BTIA stands for is um, with regards to, uh, I, like I mentioned to them, it's a little bit dynamic and positive leadership whereby we want to try to fill in the gaps. I think we have some good, um, a good foundation of groundwork already being set whereby we have certain targets and we want to you know, um, implement and accomplish as quickly as possible. And one of the key things that we are looking forward is to increasing our membership mm -hmm. uh, within the entire country. We have to reinforce our efforts within something destination chapters. We, we recently established the Belmopan chapter. I believe it was almost as new as myself. Um, <laughs> so um, so we... First, right? That's yeah. the first one. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. The first chapter yes, of Belmopan. It's the first. Yeah. So, so, so you know, the wheels have already um, been moving under Mr. Mr. Salah's leadership. Mm -hmm. So, um, on the new board, I'll, I look forward to you know keep growing in that perspective. We set a few targets to, to mm -hmm. accomplish over the next year, mm -hmm. and and I'm and I'm happy to say that we are already starting to take off a few of them. Um, you know, having an executive director on, on board is a big deal for us, and, mm -hmm. and we're very happy about that. I wish John Borg as well. The Belmopan chapter is also another one. And I must say that um, it's a new chapter. It's a very energetic group. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've met a few of them. I was there at the AGM. Um, small but growing. Yeah. And, and they see the potential for in and around Belmopan. So, you know, and there are a few chapters that we need to work with to strengthen. But um, that, that, that's one of the, as, as John implied um, or mentioned, mm -hmm. that's one of our key targets for the, for the next few months to strengthen our chapters. Secretariat's communication with them, and, and, and by extension, have them help us increase our membership. And I wanted to touch on that because your membership is important in terms of your representation. Uh, you can have very few members in each, in each district or in each chapter, but still not representing the massive private sector uh, interest in, in, in tourism. So where are you in terms of mem membership currently, and what are you aiming to achieve? Yeah, that, that's a very good question. We we have we have over 300 members right now, yeah. and 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 the way I look at it, um, we we need to increase that, and we can increase that. We, we used to have more than that some mm -hmm. years ago, um, and 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 you know therein lies a challenge and an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and as I mentioned, working with our chapters, I am very confident that we can achieve that increase in membership. With a strong secretariat and with an executive director on board, I think we can strengthen that. The, the, uh, you know, Talia and Amarita have been doing a great job, but mm -hmm. notice the, the team is now complete. Um, I, I am sure it is important to have that, that communication and, um, you know, between the secretariat and the chapters. Mm -hmm. And as that strengthens, um, we can see um, you know, more being accomplished. Um, not only increasing the membership, but engaging the current membership. Because retention is also um, an, you know, a good challenge there. Yeah. We need to retain the ones we have and, and then increase that over time. Um, but with engaged chapters, I am sure we can do that. Um, I, I, don't, I, I think we can double it. <laughs> I think we can double it. That's without, your aim? That's my aim, <laughs> at least double it, but I, I'm sure we can. Um, John, that will fall on your shoulders. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, and we should be able to. You have. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're dealing with tourism. It yeah. is the perhaps um, 
uh, we're being biased when we say this, but uh, a particularly critical industry for, for Belize. Um, statistics have ranged or varied from anywhere from one in four to one in seven jobs. And you cannot um, <coughs> ignore uh, the, the level of importance of that mm -hmm. industry as a singular um, sector, if you will, of the economy. It, it does account f um, for the largest foreign exchange earner as a singular mm -hmm. sector, no, not, not like our, um, our agricultural sector. But there are, uh, the BTIA does have a variety of hotels, two operators, restaurants uh, in terms of its core. And then there are other, if you will, subsectors. Mm -hmm. you, there are individual tour guides, you have affiliates, be it gift shops, um, be, be it uh, souvenir shops as well. And then there are associates, you know, the banking and, and some of the real estate. But there is definitely room and potential for more diversification and more growth which is needed because the BTIA speaks in all of its 30 years, does speak to being that national organization um, for the sectors of the industry and individuals so that we can advocate on their behalf. Now, I, I want to jump into uh, obviously one of the more substantial issues at this point, which is especially speaking to advocacy and even uh, moved into a legal issue at this point, and this is the NCL. Uh, issue. One of the things we saw was definitely that the BTIA uh, stepped forward in the interest of what was coming out of Placencia and your members saying that uh, the introduction of the cruise tourism in the south was against the master development plan for the BTB and uh, you took action. Uh, where are we now on this and is this something Asmani as a new leader that you will continue to pursue? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, must, I must start by saying that that is one of the very important functions that we have as, mm -hmm. a, as a private sector association group with a, with a tourism interest. We, we need to be vigilant. We need to be alert. We, we, um, um, as I said, our mission is to aim for responsible tourism development. Yeah. Um, so when, when we see um, you know, initiatives, you know, proposed developments um, that, that we feel have some elements of concern, then we will speak up um, with the support of our constituent, our constituents, our membership, right? Um, in relation to NCL, it, it is a matter that is ongoing. Um, as, as, as you're aware, as an association, we filed a lawsuit um, against the Department of the Environment and the National Appraisal Committee. Um, and, and as a, an interested party, I think you call it, the, the company that was subcontracted to, to build the port. Um, my, my understanding is that the, the case for that will be heard in June, I believe. Um, uh, but uh, right there are a lot of, sort of previous steps that have taken place. Um, you know, we have our attorneys, the other side has theirs. Um, so I, I, I think I could share that um, um, the assertions that we have an, as an association are essentially procedural. Mm -hmm. um, the, we believe that the EIA could have been much better designed. Um, there are key features of the Environmental Protection Act that could have been better followed. The terms of reference for the EIA could have been more robust and better framed and designed. Um, and, and so there is the whole matter about um, the, the supplemental EIA, which is basically the, the revised EIA after a first set of, of consultations. That uh, the public should have had um, an opportunity to review and to express their opinion, and we believe that wasn't done. So. Essentially, this, this case is about ensuring that, that, that um, this particular development and other developments, you know, developments of that nature are, are well designed. The EIAs are, and their terms of reference are well designed and carried out and that, and that the public has uh, an, an opportunity mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to, to comment and to express their opinion. Um, it, it's, it's a very important case because um, we, we will continue seeing, you know, developments of this magnitude in Belize. You know, we, we know that, 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 the, that the government um, um, 
needs to, as, as, as they always say, we need to create jobs. It's very important. Um, and they see one of the ways of doing that as um, encouraging you know, these types of developments mm -hmm. of that magnitude. Um, but as an association, we feel that we need to look at the big picture. We need to look at the overall benefits, environmentally, socially, and economic. And, 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 and developments of this, of this nature need to be carefully analyzed, and, right? And if I may add, um, it's not, let me just clarify, it's not that it's uh, the very, at the very core of all of this discussion is the, as you rightfully referred to it, um, Marlene, is the sustainable <coughs> um, uh, master plan for tourism. And that is not a BTB plan. That is a plan for the country of Belize as it relates to tourism and so widely endorsed by the government. Um, what, what's at the core of this, as, as Omani mentioned, is the procedure. See, an EIA does not have to be um, well designed. It can be very poorly designed. But if we respect the procedures of the EIA, it should then force that discussion and review of the EIA to strengthen it, because the role of any government is not um, is not necessarily to hamper development. You want to encourage it. So you want to make sure that your, um, the, the EIA requirements are as robust as they can be and that you're, uh, you are applying them. So if you're not, the procedures really ought to help in making sure that the development is done in the right way. So the, the, the issue for BTIA is definitely, I think, precedent setting, if I can use that term, because Development won't go away, and BTA doesn't want to stop it, but the very minimum that we should guarantee to our members is that if we are true to the um, premise and concept of responsible tourism, then the procedures by DOE and the NIAC should be followed, mm -hmm. regardless of who the developer is, what size of the development is. And that, should, uh, that should get us closer to that target, that elusive target, of responsible, sustainable tourism. No? So would you say that that is your goal in this particular uh, case? Because we know that the, the work on uh, Harvest Key has already gotten yeah. started, and perhaps yeah. many of the issues that were not addressed, I should say, in the EIA, are already being implemented. Um, so would you say that your goal is simply to have precedent set? Well, yes, yes. I mean, for future development, right? There's meant there. There are going to be many other developments. Some are already in the pipeline, mm -hmm. and so it's important that the lessons are learned um, from this, so that we don't find ourselves back on OIE, for example, talking about <laughs> yet another lawsuit. It shouldn't yeah. be about lawsuits. Um, if we follow the procedures, we should not be going through a lot of the angst that we go through as a sector when you hear this development happening on our um, in, on offshore, this development happening in a protected area, mm -hmm. if we were to follow the procedures that are set out. So um, there is no doubt that the port will go through. Yeah. Uh, BTA is not about to stop that. But we do want to be clear that we learned from this exercise, this, this project, this uh, and the process. Yeah. Yeah. And so that it doesn't, we don't find ourselves in this position again. Mm -hmm. It is very important that development projects, especially of that magnitude, when when when, when their their uh, when the potential impacts are, are analyzed, mm -hmm. you need they need to be looked at the potential environmental impacts, economic and social. They need to be looked at very carefully. Mm -hmm. um, I, I with, with the NCL issue, I think we need to mention from from our um, understanding once that port is up and running, uh, I think it's estimated that about, you know, Belize City will lose about 75 uh, port cars, you call it, yeah. in, in the upcoming season. Yeah. The well, they're saying that they have other ships that are interested that will fill those slots. That's yeah. what we're, be, we're told right, at this point. Right. But we don't know. We, we don't, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess, know at this point. Yeah. But if that would be the case, that would represent a lot a loss for this area. And it has city. been a valid concern made by the Tour Guides Association mm -hmm. here in the city and also uh, I'm sure some of your members as well. But uh, uh, bringing it back to uh, relationship <coughs> development, one of the things that this, this uh, 
the advocacy that BTIA took up with the NCL was showing that perhaps the relationship with the BTB, which is another interest in, in the tourism industry, mm -hmm. uh, that you weren't on the same page in terms of what is best. So what would you say about that particular relationship? Well, the, the BTB, we see them as our partners. They mm -hmm. are our partners when it comes to, 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 to developing the industry. Um, we will not always see eye to eye. And, and, um, and I think um, it is always healthy when, when you know, right, depending on the issue at hand, mm -hmm. when there is you know, dissent from other quarters. Mm -hmm. I, I, I believe that it is only um, in dissent that, that, um, that you can have better solutions. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that is a role that we see for, for ourselves. Um, I, I, um, I am new to the post, as you mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. I represent the association on the board of the BTB. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I've been to my first meeting, and, and I must say that um, I, I, I see my role there as, as, as a productive role. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I see them as my colleagues and my partners. Um, um, but again, there will be times when we will have to respectfully and sometimes very firmly differ in opinion and differ in approach. But at the same time, together, we, we will work at you know, marketing and promoting our country yeah. as, as a very important destination. Mm -hmm. Now, another issue that was uh, very much a hot button issue was the uh, docking, the need for a docking facility um, here in Belize City. And uh, that is also another case that is before the courts. Um, however, we never heard BTIA uh, sound say anything about this particular issue has it been a concern for uh, your members and uh, what are your perspectives in terms of being able to have uh, the issue being addressed um, well that that speaks to the I guess primarily to the cruise sector yes um, and the there is a need I think all members of uh, um, in the industry and members of BTA Mm -hmm. When you come to Belize City, it's just so glaringly obvious yeah. that there is a need for a docking facility. I think even uh, members of the government have expressed <coughs> as um, same, and that hasn't gone away. Mm -hmm. Where just the, I believe just this week, or if not this week, not too long ago, um, on a regular rough March day mm -hmm. with wind, uh, there is a possibility that a ship will not be able to anchor mm -hmm. um, because it, cer it certainly won't be safe enough for the tendering. And um, you, cannot, you, you cannot ignore that because of the amount of Belizeans that this sector um, employs mm -hmm. and the amount of investment that has been made by those working in, in that sector. So that won't go away. Um, in terms of the, the lawsuit or possible mm -hmm. lawsuit, uh, BTA really has not been abreast okay. in any great detail on that. Um, and I believe it's between correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's between government and one of the, the developers or something. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we haven't been abreast of that. However, um, if, if it is that it's asked, does Belize need a docking facility, all parties involved will tell you yes. Mm -hmm. um, that is a no-brainer. Uh, the bigger question is, where should the docking facility go? Mm -hmm. And I guess that is the one that requires a lot more discussion and detail for it to advance because this, the idea, the question of a doc docking facility has been one that is at least 15, maybe 20 years old now. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be taking this long to uh, at least determine, yes, we need one. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps a little bit long, yes, to determine where it should go. But by now, it would have been nice to have start seeing um, something. Yeah, I, yeah. I, um, I think so too. I mean, the, you know, the very same National Sustainable Tourism Master Plan identifies this part of the country as where cruise tourism should be focused. Mm -hmm. So a, a solution should be should be should be identified soon. Yeah. It's important. Now, what are some of the other issues that you're hearing from your membership at this time? Typically, we don't hear much from the tourism sector because this is a very good time for you. Yeah, you're busy, <laughs> well, um, well, and, and yeah, things yeah, yeah, usually yeah. are yeah. flourishing, and yeah, it's more yeah. in the yeah. off season. Yeah. Yeah. Just before the end of our segment, I, I would like the chance to just. Just highlight a few key events coming up yeah. yes. uh, to our various destinations. But, yeah. but so you know, concerns from from the various from mm -hmm. the various areas. I mean, I know that the our, our members in Cayo, some of their concerns have to do with 
with the with the condition of the roads, roads. to some of the major destinations yeah. like Caracol, for example, security, mm -hmm. security issues, major concerns that we, we know about the the, the tragic um, 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 incident at Caracol. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, these are real, very pressing concerns yeah. that that they have been clamoring for for a solution for this. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, and with that, the crime. Um uh, what we can't turn our eye off, our eyes from, is the, the increasing crime that's occurring now in exactly. Ambergris Key. Exactly. Ambergris Key uh, is one of the most popular tourist destination. It's very marquee for Belize. And it was TripAdvisor's number one island right. for two years in a row. And um, it, it's it's very concerning. It's very worrisome. And obviously, uh, members have expressed that from yeah. the island that um, there needs to be a sense of urgency on the part of uh, arresting that situation. Yeah. Have your members uh, indicated that they have been losing business because of this? No, not yet. Okay. Um, not yet. The situation. Uh, we are pending a visit out there mm -hmm. uh, to go meet oh, the yeah, yes. yes. key yes. mm -hmm. to kind of get our assessment of, of what's going mm -hmm. on and, and impact, if any, so mm -hmm. far. Um, but understand when with today's media, mm -hmm. everything is so viral. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when you say, you know, uh, man shot, man killed um, in the small island destination of, yeah. <coughs> Will one really scroll through all of that to determine, okay, is it, where is that in relation to the hotel I'm yeah. going to stay? <laughs> it happened in Belize and on yeah. the island that I am supposed to go spend yeah. a vacation. So from that perspective alone, um, it is concerning. And the <coughs> frequency in which it has, it has been occurring. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there is a deeper um, issue yeah. uh, on Ambergris Key. Um, and we will have to grapple with that uh, as to represent our members. But there is uh, clearly a um, concern expressed by members on Ambergris Key that this is concerning, mm -hmm. and they are um, they're alarmed by it, by the frequency of it. But what, what, what I would want to suggest or to offer, so you hear more from the industry, mm -hmm. <laughs> is that we, we, we could come more regularly. I mean, with, 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 with our various chapter reps, okay. you know, so that you, you, so that you hear from them yeah. about what is happening in their area in particular. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I hope you take up the offer. <laughs> well, we, 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 we will talk after this what can happen. Because we know you're also very closely moving. The slow season starts, what, after Easter, uh, just around about, that time? Yeah, yeah. Just about. It varies for some areas. But anyway, talk about the summer months right through yeah. to October. Yeah. That's where we are. But there, I mean, the, the issues, they, they, they cover a wide scope. There's crime, yes. There's yeah. infrastructure, yes. There's education, putting tourism on that. Um, on the curricula, but not necessarily just at a tertiary level. Yeah. Uh, tourism still is a meaningful and substantive professional career, and it should mm -hmm. be touted as such. Um, from our secondary schools, our, ch our children in primary school should, should understand the importance of this industry um, to the country that they live in, yeah. um, so that it can be a viable option um, as they advance through, through the years. In addition to that, there's the whole aspect of protecting the culture mm -hmm. and how and ensuring that we are developing tourism responsibly while we protect our um, our natural resources. In your opening, and you mentioned, um, if I'm not mistaken, something about Reef Week. That's yes. a huge. That's such a huge asset for Belize. Belize's no, Belize's tourism cannot be discussed without Belize's work in protected areas. The yeah. two are married. Um, inevitably together forever. Well, in our conversation about Reef Week, uh, I believe the statistics they gave, it, it was about half of the, the tourists who visit are because of the marine yeah. protected areas. Yeah. So I guess there has to be a lot more synergy, can become an, an international exactly. celebration uh, if necessary. Yeah, so BTA has been participating yeah. in you know, trying to Yeah, Keycocker has a number of events right, as right, well. Right. On. Yeah. Yeah. I won't forget to yeah. say that. <laughs> Don't worry. But, but, but no, our, our, our destination chapters um, you know, play a key role in helping to build a tourism product. Yeah. So along those lines, I need to put a plug for, for our Toledo chapter that in May, they'll be having Cacao Fest, their, mm -hmm. their, their chocolate fest. Mm -hmm. I think a three day event. Yes, yeah. it is. So, yeah. um, it is definitely, I, I mean, I'm sure they're become, the becoming like, a, like the 
bigger festivals where the hotels book out very right, quickly. Right, yes. right, so right. Um, that comes up in May. That comes up in May. Um, and PG, how is PG doing? The Toledo, the Toledo chapter. The, that is one of uh, more active chapters. Yeah. I must say um, they, they've, they've, they've been doing very well, and, and and they have partnered with the Belize Tourism Board to mm -hmm. to to develop a few cultural trails. Yeah. Right. Um, um, you know, for that experience. Eh? Mm -hmm. so, so, so not the regular type trail that you walk through a jungle, yeah. <laughs> but the trail that gives you an experience through communities, experience the culture and the culinary experience and all of that. So mm -hmm. I was very excited to see them embarking on that in, in partnership with the Belize Tourism Board. Also, you, you can begin to mention and make a note of the Dangriga chapter as well. They also uh -huh. have the, the they have, um, they're rebranding again the mango mango fest that they normally yeah. have. At, mango and, fest. And, yes, and and Hopkins. in Hopkins. 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 And they're yeah. gonna. I, I believe they have a schedule for the 30th of May. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. something that if you've been to Punta Gorda for the cacao, maybe you want to explore a little bit up north. Mm -hmm. So and take the time to go and visit Hopkins. And, and the and south is absolutely beautiful. I think a lot of amazing. people from central and north don't necessarily yes, trek yes, downwards yes. as often. Now, John, I want to ask you, especially uh, one of my favorite questions to ask anybody in the tourism <laughs> sector, which is how do we focus on getting Belizeans exposed to our tourist destinations? What, what are your ideas, especially coming in as executive director, in terms of engaging Belizeans so we all become ambassadors of the beauty that the country has? Um, personally, I am an avid traveler of Belize. I, I, I think I, I've been to every corner of Belize, and I always enjoy the experience of meeting the different persons and characters and cultures that you meet at different destinations and all the districts. And every district has its flavor. So one of the things that's, because we, we're going to be working on a marketing plan mm -hmm. um, for, for BTIA, and one of the things that we want to voice out to, the, to our members is that to create something that can create more awareness as to what each district offer. Yeah. And maybe we can have a, a, a more general <coughs> calendar of the different events happening so that people have know what is going on. Um, in collaboration as well, we can know when is the high season. You know when the high season hot, hot, hotels are limited, yeah. you may want to visit a resort and the availability of the accessibility to those resorts may be limited. So we, we have to find a way in which our, um, our members of an association, along with the association, come up with something where we can market it and make it um, keep it constant. Though it has to mm -hmm. be something very proactive and very progressive. Yeah. It's not something that we're going to hear it for a couple of months. No, it's supposed to be something. Only in the our year. season. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's supposed to be something true the entire year. <laughs> yeah. And we have to make it accessible, um, yes. Marlene. The, that challenge of, you know, we always talk about buy Belize and promote Belize, but. Un unless all those involved, and that, not, that does not rest solely on the shoulders of a, of a BTIA nonprofit membership organization, mm -hmm. but on all sectors, the transport sector, mm -hmm. um, be it by bus or boat, mm -hmm. if you, you have to think, um, if you're thinking summer is coming up, Easter, if a family has an average of anywhere from two to four children, you cannot escape the fact of the costliness of flying mm -hmm. from point A to point B or going from point A to point B on a bus depending on where you're going. Mm -hmm. So I think that needs a broader discussion. It's not just hotels giving discounts. It's not just restaurants giving discounts. But you have to make it accessible yeah. to Belizeans by bus, by boat, and even by air. Mm -hmm. um, there, there is a tendency for summer where Belizeans will get on a plane because there's some specials and they'll go to LA, Chicago, mm -hmm. New York, um, and even Cancun, mm -hmm. um, which is a lot, a lot of Belizeans are doing that. Yeah. But you need to really, if we want to develop this uh, local tourism yeah. as is done successfully in many other destinations, you ha we as a, as a sector with our various partners um, and that is not just BTB, like I said, the transport and others. We have to assess why is it that they're getting, why is it there's a sense that there's more value going to a Cancun than staying here? What is it that we're not doing or ca um, to capture their attention? The state of the infrastructure is that that's, yeah. that, you know, that's, uh, that's very critical. I, you're just seeing the, the, the road into Placencia now, yeah. the, the highway all down south. Mm -hmm. um, um, and it, they're going to be doing some work on the Hummingbird Highway right. now, so uh, that will help. Yeah. Makes you know, parts of Belize more accessible. Yeah. 
But I, I think, yeah. uh, speaking, and, and I'm sure if William was here, he would bring it up, because he <laughs> always speaks of this Isla Mujeres experience where you realize so many Belizeans are spending this exorbitant yes. amount of money yeah, yeah. to experience Isla Mujeres when we can get it better and cheaper for mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. um, but there's often the questions of the how-to. Uh, people don't know where to go in Placencia or how to get to this place or that place or what are the best options, or that there are Belizean rates, and they don't ask for it right, when, they, right, when right. they make a call to the hotel. So, you know, it's one of you, you mentioned a marketing yeah. plan, and yeah, that makes me excited, because. <laughs> just to contribute to what Valerie yeah. was mentioning, it, it's about partnering and getting all the different individuals yeah. in, the, in the industry involved, so that we can come up with strategies that we can address those issues. Yeah. You know, we certainly can make suggestions based on what our membership would yeah. like to see, you know, how they feel themselves fitting into that. An up-to-date calendar of events um, through social media or our website in different ways, we, we can spread this information. So we, we, we can improve along those lines. <laughs> it's a very good point. Yeah. Um, so, so that is an area yeah, that I mean, we have to work on. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the other activities you have going and uh, how this big anniversary will be celebrated. Right. Let me just list a few. Um, mm -hmm. um, in May, as I mentioned, you know, there will be a chocolate fest in Toledo. Um, Orange Walk will be having some events later in May as well, uh, you know, fundraising events for them. Uh, there's Lobster Fest in Placencia. Mm -hmm. that, that will be the highlight in June. Um, in about. September, there, you know, Placencia will be having a saltwater fishing tournament. In, in that same month, Cayo will be having a first ever corn festival. Very excited about that, um, and, and, and you know they are already working on putting that together in in partnership with the, with the town council there. Uh, Key Cocker will be having you know tourism training week in October. I think Placencia has a mistletoe ball in December. Yeah. Uh, you, you refer to the Mango Festival. That, that, yes. That's a signature event that Hopkins is Hopkins, putting together. So, yeah. right, this is just a few. But um, um, you, you mentioned it, and it's an opportunity to, to repeat it, that it's our 30th anniversary, and we will, we will design um, a, a number of activities, initiative events to, to celebrate our 30th birthday. No? Mm -hmm. So um, we, we are starting to, 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 to put the, the, the wheel into motion to plan that. So you, you you know you will hear more about that in the ensuing weeks. And it's um, almost every month or every two to three months. There is some major festival or event right. occurring in one of these destinations. Lobster Fest um, occurs in San Pedro, in Key Cocker, and Placencia at three different times. Yeah. Um, uh, we talk about these other ones in Dangriga, in Cayo, There's in Orange Walk. There's, There's Cashew, Cashew Fest. Fest. Yeah. So those are also opportunities to get Belizeans out to mm -hmm. explore and appreciate what you're doing there is you're appreciating tourism because that's all tourism right. at the end of the day. Festival is a great way yeah. for, for Belizeans to learn more about their own culture. About and about all of them have. involve food, which is <laughs> one of the best incentives to travel. And, and, <laughs> and in some cases, cases drinks. The way it's his heart has been told what's true food, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. works every time. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. And yeah. that's one of the things that captured me with the, yeah. with the Mango Fest taking place in Hopkins. Mm -hmm. um, they, they are going to be featuring all mango, various mango products mm -hmm. the entire day. Um, they also mentioned they're going to be having a lot of entertainment there available. And one of the, the, the key entertainers that's going to be, that's already been booked, is the Garifuna Collective. Ooh. So yeah. that, that's something that it's not only for locals, but yeah. people that may be in, in country that they can, you know, look into that, a part of a tour, you know. Yeah. It's impossible not to like this industry, Marlene. You, you have to be captivated by it. Yes, and I can give you lots of ideas to make it easier for the rest of us. But, um, <laughs> but no, I, I think fundamentally, and it really echoes for me what was discussed yesterday with the Reef Week. We all in this country are proud of the beauty that yeah. we possess. Um, but it is important that we experience it firsthand Absolutely. to really become salespersons yes. for it. Otherwise, we look at pictures and say, yeah, that's somewhere I've never been. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no connection. So uh, I know that's only one of the issues you all have to address. But thank you, anyway, for coming Thanks in. For the opportunity. And providing an update to us and our viewers uh, as to what's happening with the BTIA. Right? Thank you, thank you very much. We're going to go ahead and take our break. And when we come back, it's to talk about lion fishing in Mili.